SPSS can be very helpful once we get used to it. Like most anything though, it has its limitations. The one that's most important to understand at this point is that it doesn't understand if the analysis we're asking it to do is the right analysis or the appropriate analysis for the data we have. In other words, if the data is formatted in a way the program can work with, it'll do whatever we ask it to do. Here's an example of why that's a problem. We can use numbers to identify whether a participant indicated they identify as a male or a female. For the, this example, we'll think about data that did not include participants who selected other categories. So, to make data entry easier, I used one to identify female participants and two to identify males. But then it wouldn't make sense to say the average sex is 1.5. Although it might fit with our understanding of sex and gender, mathematically it doesn't really make sense. What would make sense is to say we have five participants who identified as female and five who identified as male. SPSS will compute an average of the numbers, though. In other words, it would tell us the average of participant gender identification was 1.5. That example illustrates two important concepts, scales of measurement and statistical analysis. Given that, we need to have a sense of what numbers in the data file mean. In statistics, we call that the scale of measurement. Broadly speaking, the initial question is whether the numbers label categories or whether they have meaning as a number. Understanding the meaning of the numbers in the data file is important for both descriptive and inferential statistics. In both cases, we use different analyses depending on the type of data we have.